MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted into medical school and other professional programs. And welcome back to MCAT Bytes, where we break down complex MCAT topics. Today's topic is on deviance and social control, a subject crucial for both the MCAT and understanding social dynamics. Dive in as we explore how society defines normalcy and reacts to deviations, all while getting you an extra three to four points on the psych section. Let's jump on in, starting with some definitions. Deviance refers to actions or behaviors that veer off the path of social norms, ranging from jaywalking to more severe acts like theft. But what's fascinating is how these norms shift across cultures and times, reflecting society's evolving moral compass. Social control, the mechanisms a society employs to enforce its norms, can be as mild as a disapproving glance or severe as legal penalties. Let's dissect the layers of social norms from the laws etched in legal codes to the unwritten rules guiding everyday interaction. Beginning with the spectrum of social norms. Imagine entering an elevator and facing the crowd instead of the door. This would be a folkway violation that raises eyebrows but carries no real moral weight. Contrast this with more severe breaches like breaking mores and taboos such as infidelity or cannibalism in most societies. These elicit stronger social reactions and in many cases, legal repercussions. Now let's start explaining why deviance occurs. First up, we've got labeling theory. This perspective suggests that deviance is not inherent in any act, but becomes deviant through societal reaction. When society labels someone as deviant for a particular act, that label affects the individual's self-identity. This external label can lead to further deviance as the individual aligns with the societal expectations of their label. Imagine a student caught cheating. Once labeled as a cheater, they might continue down a path of dishonesty, believing that's how they're viewed regardless. Next, we'll discuss differential association theory. It posits that deviance is learned behavior from those around us. If a teenager grows up in an environment where illegal substance use is normalized by peers, well, they're more likely to adopt those behaviors, not because of individual pathology, but due to social influence. This theory stresses the importance of social context in shaping our definitions of and inclinations towards deviance. It says, who you hang out with is who you're gonna become. Finally, strain theory. This brings a new angle, focusing on the gap between societal goals and the means available to achieve them. Not everyone has access to the legitimate means to reach society's success benchmarks. This discrepancy can lead individuals to adopt deviant methods to fulfill their ambitions. An example could be someone from a disadvantaged background turning to illegal activities as a means of achieving financial success. Driven not entirely by moral deficiency, but by structural inequalities. To break down strain theory, it's sort of like you're really straining because you want to do something, but there's some external factor preventing you from doing it that you are unable to overcome. Because of that, you blow up and likely commit some crime. Let's connect these theories to social control. Understanding these theories provides insights into the mechanisms of social control. Societies and their institutions react to deviance based on these underlying principles shaping policies and interventions. Whether through reinforcing norms or addressing the root cause of deviance, social control efforts are deeply intertwined with their understanding of why deviance occurs. Consider how tattoos are celebrated as art and identity in some cultures, yet view viewed as rebellious or unprofessional in others. This cultural dichotomy showcases the relative nature of deviance. Reflect on the impact of social media on deviance perception, where behaviors once considered private or taboo are now broadcasted and in some cases normalized. Let's finish off with some practice questions to make sure you've got it down. A high school student is caught cheating on an exam and is labeled as a cheater by both peers and teachers. According to labeling theory, what is a likely long-term outcome for the student? Take a few moments and try and answer this on your own. The correct answer to this will be B. The student internalizes the label and continues to engage in cheating, believing it to be a part of their identity. The student was labeled a cheater, so he's gonna be a cheater forever. We've got two left here. Which scenario best illustrates the differential association theory? A, a teenager decides to start shoplifting after observing and discussing the behavior of older siblings who shoplift. B, an individual decides to commit a crime after weighing the pros and cons. C, a person from a low income neighborhood chooses not to engage in crime, aspiring to societal ideals of success. Or D, a community collectively decides to follow new social norms introduced by external influences. Take a few moments, Think about it, write it down. I think the answer to this one will be A, a teenager decides to shoplift after observing and discussing the behavior of older siblings who shoplift. This makes sense. 
because the people this teenager is interacting with are determining what the teen will do. Hopefully those practice questions are making you feel a bit more confident in what we've gone over. And I want to thank you so much for watching our video on deviance and social control, and I will see you next time.